Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your cross you have redeemed the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to the Father except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that he who believes in him might not perish, but might have life eternal. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of the Gospel wipe away our sins. My dear brothers and sisters, what a glorious feast we celebrate today. Yes, today is indeed the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Now I could expound forever on the history of the cross and how St Helen, the mother of the Emperor Constantine, found the true cross at the site of Calvary, but I'm not going to. I could spend a long time telling you all what the cross means to me personally, but I'm not going to. I want to start off with a question. Does the cross truly make sense? Now, if we could separate ourselves from all that we have learned about the cross of Jesus and to look at it from the secular and the historical perspective, then the cross is a sign of humiliation and tragedy. The cross is connected to the story of a man who became popular with many, yet was vehemently hated by others. In the end, those who hated this man arranged for his brutal crucifixion. So, from a purely secular point of view, the cross is truly a horrible thing. But thankfully, my dear family, we do not see the cross from the secular point of view. We see it from the divine perspective. We see Jesus lifted up on the cross for all to see. We see him using these horrible sufferings to eliminate suffering. We see him using death to destroy death forever. Ultimately, we see Jesus become victorious on the cross and therefore forever we see the cross as an exalted and glorious throne. Moses' actions in the desert prefigured the cross. Many people were dying from snake bites. Therefore, God told Moses to lift up the image of a snake on a pole so that whoever looked upon it would be healed. And we know from scripture that that's exactly what happened. It's quite ironic, isn't it? That the snake brought life instead of death. Now, suffering occurs throughout our lives and in various ways. Perhaps for some it's the aches and pains from ill health. For others 
it may be on a much deeper level, such as emotional, personal, relational, or a spiritual one. You see, sin is in fact the cause of the greatest sufferings. So for those who struggle deeply with sin in their lives, they suffer deeply from that sin. And so we ask ourselves, what is Jesus' answer? His answer, my brothers and sisters, is to turn our gaze to his cross. We are to look at him in his misery and in his sufferings. And in that gaze, we are called to see victory with faith. We are called to know that God brings good out of all things. Yes, even suffering. The Father transformed the world eternally through the suffering and death of his only begotten Son. He also wants to transform us through our daily crosses. And so, my dear friends, today let us reflect upon the cross of Christ. Let us spend some time gazing upon the crucifix. Let us see in that crucifix the answers to our own daily struggles. Jesus is close. In fact, he is very close to those who suffer. And his strength is available to all those who believe in him. Lord, help me to gaze upon the cross. Help me to experience in your own sufferings a taste of your final victory. May I be strengthened and healed as I look upon you. Jesus, I trust in you. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>